Hello and welcome to the Museum of Contemporary Art. I'm Lisa Key, the Director of Development here at the MCA, and I want to start this evening off with a compliment. Tonight we have one of the best looking crowds at any opening we've had, so congratulate yourselves. This exhibition would not be possible without the many individuals, corporations, and foundations who've helped support the project. The slide behind me um, gives recognition to those partners. And while I don't want to take time to recognize the lengthy list, I do want to point out our lead sponsors, King and Karen Harris and the Harris Family Foundation, as they are with us tonight, and we want to say thank you to them. And that applause is also for the other very generous individuals, corporations, and foundations who've helped us tonight. Thank you to you all. Your support is very important. We're very excited about the premiere of Ronan and Erwan Burlak bivouac exhibition. And tonight, you are going to get to experience them up close and personal. And to do that, our James W. Alsdorf's chief curator, Michael Darling, will be leading you through a conversation. It's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Michael, to you now. Michael? Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Uh, it's great to see such a great crowd here tonight. Um, I'm really thrilled to have Ronan Erwan here. Uh, they've been uh, friends uh, for over 10 years now. I've followed their work closely. I've worked with them on projects in the past, and it's really great to, to bring them here to Chicago and to transform the galleries here at the MCA. For those of you that have already been upstairs and have seen it, uh, I think you can attest to the fact of how different it looks, how ambitious this show is. Uh, and for those of you that haven't seen it yet, I think you're really in for a treat. Um, I also especially want to thank the uh, the amazing installation and preparatory crew here at the MCA who's really worked closely with uh, Ronan and Erwan and Felipe Ribon from their studio for the last three weeks. Uh, this team has been led with, by G.R. Smith and the brothers uh, and Felipe have said that this is the best team that they've ever worked with. So big round of applause for G.R. and his team. Uh, in terms of, of, sh of a shipment of materials to the MCA, this is also the biggest show we've ever, we've ever um, put on. There were six 40-foot shipping containers that arrived to us from uh, France, and uh, we also really thank Meredith Gray for keeping all of that straight and getting everything here safely, so if we can all acknowledge Meredith, too. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's uh, bring out Ronan and Erwan and uh, hear directly from them what has guided them over the last 15 years in their work. Ronan, Erwan. So I have some, some basic questions to, uh, to start with with both of you. Um, one of which, um, you know, I think starting from, from, and we're just going to have lots of images scrolling behind us here so you get a sense of the, the breadth of their work, and I think we'll talk more, more generally about things. But, um, so it will be less boring because we are not very funny, <laughs> to be honest. They're modest, you can tell. Um, but I think, I think it'd be great for everybody to, to understand exactly how it was that you two came to work together at, you know, as brothers, as, as designers. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, by chance when I was 15 I just discovered that uh, I was fascinated by design so um, for me it has been sort of it's quite nice to be passionate and when you discover it quickly it's, uh, it's a chance uh, <clears throat> I had a lot of uh, chance very quickly uh, small success, very small but uh, one was my young brother five years less than me, so when he was five, I was 10, so he was an idiot. When I was 15, he was 10, so <laughs> you know that five, five is a lot when you are children. And uh, Erwan started to help me a bit because I, I had a bit of work. Um, uh, it was very simple because I do not have to pay him, so it was a, <laughs> a chance. Uh, but, uh, and very quickly, he become to be more than, Erwan is brilliant, so it's quite... Uh, Nice it was less dangerous for him that I would work with him 
instead of against him. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And can you describe a little bit what each of you bring to the equation? I mean, if the differences in your aesthetic approaches, your design philosophies, and, and how that comes together, and, and even how we, how we might recognize that in your in your work? I'm clearly the most intelligent. That's uh, no doubt on it. But no. Well, it, uh, it, well, very often this question appears. The fact is that we share everything. So each question is something that we discuss. So the typography for the show, the exact position of it could be a, a, a reason for a fight. So we, we, we do not like compromise. We are both of us. Uh, we want to do the best. So and to, to arrive to something good, it's, uh, it's not something very easy. So, and until we are not totally satisfied, we don't want to do things just to, to, to be sympathetic to the other. We just, uh, we want to find the, 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 the good solution. So, and um, as we, we are brother, we've got, we can arrive to a level of uh, fight or level of tension that is, uh, that is uh, important more than a normal partner. So it's a chance that we can, we can pass this, uh, this level and, and arrive to something interesting. So it's, uh, it's how we work. So we share the same table. Uh, during 12 years, two years ago, we decided to, to have separate table, but they are two or three meter distance, so it's not so much, and uh, and that's a fact. But <clears throat> as Ronan was saying, maybe we, f for myself, um, I have the impression uh, that I'm more, uh, I more understand uh, how far design can go as soon as you treat it properly. Um, I think ten years ago I had no, not the same kind of. Um, understanding. I had explain and, you. Uh, and I think that, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I find more, much more difficult to, to, to work now than, uh, than in the past. I'm more, um, I, we, we, we've I'd, got like, I'd, I'd like to achieve some, some, some further point of view. Uh, and that's that sometimes uh, um, reality is uh, kind of difficult to cope with. So, Ronan is always mentioning fight, and it's true that in the past year we've been probably less and less uh, unsatisfied, unsatisfied, uh, which is in a way strange, uh, uh, looking at a certain success that we that we've had. The key of a success, of the fact if we are unsatisfied, it means that we start to we want to do better. We love to tell lessons, you know. It's starting, you know. <laughs> It's a man, I, sometimes I shall feel like, I mean, it's more th the, the father at the table, more than 60, what is they? Oh, you know. I mean, when, you, when you've got the truth, you need to share it to someone. So, yeah. um, I, I think it's interesting, the, uh, the kitchen table as a metaphor um, for, for your work is something that's come, come up, and, and there's this amazing join product that, I mean, I always remember your stories about that, but isn't, don't you have a story about potatoes, Erwan, that you can share with <laughs> us that? I've been, I've been, uh, my, 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 the real problem in my life is that I'm so relaxed and is so stressed. <laughs> and, um, and, and, uh, and sometimes it managed to put me out of my sight. So once in my life, I've been showing potatoes to him. And, and it was a table that was not more than two meters deep. And with five potatoes, I couldn't match. I, I mean, I couldn't face it once. I, I, was, I was so upset. I was crying. I was throwing potatoes. <laughs> but none of them went to him. But he was and, 10. And, and, he was and, 10. And, and, he, and was he always 10. had this, uh, this way of putting me under pressure sometimes. As, uh, well, one, one thing, I mean, I think it's interesting to hear that, you know, you really think and work as with one. With your real potatoes and that uh, real contact with, sorry. Well, I was, I was going to say, you know, 
when we see these objects in the exhibition, of course, they're, everything's jointly credited to the both of you. But there are moments in the show where we do get glimpses at your, your different approaches. There are all sorts of drawings in the exhibition, and you can definitely tell the difference between one or the other. And then there's also this great video that shows uh, both of you drawing uh, actively. And so, I mean, there must be something about that that you want us to, to know about and appreciate. No. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> under, under, under lying all the drawings that are there, we could have brought at the end many, many technical drawings. We could have brought many sketches uh, that, that, that would look in a way more co convenient to a, a design process. But the, uh, at the end, w w what we face is uh, trying a way to kind of shape a culture inside the object we, we design. And this goes through this kind of uh, strange process. Uh, and, and, and the drawing is, is what we've been doing uh, most of the time, uh, which in our case is partially also a meditative process. Uh, we do 10 projects a year, maybe 15. Uh, there is not so many material, not so many shapes, not so many details into one object. What we have to do all the time is kind of study every part of the object and, 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 and take out everything that would be not, not worth it inside it. And, uh, and for this, we, we have to kind of re-study every time the same thing. Sometimes I think maybe architects have uh, um, an easier thing because the project is always growing and growing. There is always more and more to do. In design, that's the opposite. Uh, uh, the project from the initial idea as to highly, highly, highly concentrate. And, um, and, 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 and this process of concentrating, we do it with words, we do it with design, uh, with, with, with drawings, with doing with, uh, with shape. Um, we, that, that, that what we, that what we, we, we wanted to show. Most of the time, uh, I think, there could be a kind of analogy between design and engineering. Uh, you, you could think that the issue of design at the end is well using the material and, and well doing a function, which is the beaba, which is the minimum that has to be done, but really the real issue is, is, is looking for a culture. And, um, and it goes by, by something else. Me, me I, 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 I was trained as a fine, fine uh, artist, fine, fine art artist, um, and um, and yes, you didn't succeed. You didn't. Huh? <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> Is there any potatoes around? <laughs> Well, one th one thing that I think your your comments reveal is is the um, the amount of attention that you lavish on every single piece that comes out of your studio, and and I think it's amazing even in the time that I've known you, um, multiple museum shows around the world, books on your work, you're in every design magazine, and yet your studio has remained very small. Um, can you talk a little bit about why that is? It's a very, I think we are very simple. It's why uh, we try to, we try to do interesting objects, but then we try to find a good strategy for that. Uh, I said before that we are passionate by this discipline. So it means that I'm very happy to be with you, but I'm very more happy to be alone uh, or with Erwan and some people in the studio to, to sue a bit of, of, uh, of textile or to uh, to cut a bit of wood or to draw, so it's a real passion. I like to do that. So it means that uh, if we had a big studio, I will have to travel a lot. Uh, I will have to uh, do, do a lot of, meet of meeting. I hate doing meeting, to be honest. So it means that we've got a small team with a marvelous assistant, uh, and we just work for a few companies when we are sure that we will uh, we, to be with people who are passionate like us. And we have been very lucky that very, when we were very young, when big companies started to ask us to work with them, and they really understand that uh, they needed to be very, very, 
uh, very linked to us. So, uh, so we work for companies that basically is how I describe them. It's people, we work for companies which are leading by people that I can uh, call at midnight because I've got an idea, because I consider that I need to share something. So uh, we, we work with, with people which are passionate, uh, like you, or, or like uh, Vitra, or I don't know. So I, I think keeping this studio so small makes that we do not need to earn too much money, so there is not too much pressure. So it means that when... Uh, very, very small company. In the, in, the, in the exhibition, there is a project of the chair that was one of the most difficult projects in the past 10, two, ten uh, years. Uh, and it's a company, uh, company which was in big, big trouble because of the crisis. A very, very small Italian company, led by a family and 10 people. And they ask us if we want to try to, to do a chair for them. Uh, we spend a lot, a lot of time on this project. It was not paid, but uh, so this studio means that we can work on, and there is a lot of passionate questions which appear with people who just not a lot of uh, um, possibility. Or, so we are super free to, for example, next week, so it's a very busy time for us, but uh, we launch the new furniture of the Copenhagen University. So it was a uh, very, very important for us to, to work for super cheap in terms of uh, price uh, furniture, but in the same time very refined, I think. And basic, and in parallel, we work actually on the chandelier in, of the entrance of the Chateau de Versailles. So we are jumping from a lot of subjects and uh, we try to keep non-specialists at all because I, I hate specialists. You, when you become to be a specialist, you just, uh, uh, you know too much about, about something and you miss a certain um, sensuality, I think. And uh, I think this is a magical of project is when there is a bit of uh, sensuality, a bit of um, magic, uh, a bit of emotions. This is, there is function, of course, there is a, the weight, of course, there is a comfort, of course, but uh, uh, there is some project or some object we've got something more which is uh, that you cannot exactly define but they are well thought they are, and they are refined. It's like a, a nice person so there is objective, there is clever fact uh, to analyze but uh, the charm is something that you can really, so it's not a question of method. Uh, I hate the idea of method. Uh, it's not a question of uh, being organized, I don't like to be organized. It's a question of being, try to find um, a certain... Mm. I, I, think, I think that uh, quality that you have of being able to, you know, make things for a real kind of luxury audience or, or market and then also make things that are quite democratic. Uh, can you talk about how the, the different lessons for you or, or how you navigate that? Do you like one area versus another or is there one better? That, do you feel any kind of uh, pressure in a way to deliver uh, more democratic, lower cost products? Um, I think this world is a, is, is a very... Um it's a very interesting world. There is always different facts, there is different situation. Uh, when I started, I was uh, interested to do this, this discipline because I like the fact that if you've got a good idea, you can reproduce it. So the idea of... Uh, uh, I was against the art in a certain sense that I feel too bourgeois in a certain way. Uh, I like the fact that it's something could be uh, could be reproduced and could be shared. It's something more interesting. Uh, after that, uh, to arrive to a certain price, low price, all that, you have to deal with machine, you have to deal with uh, distribution, you have to deal with a lot of problems which are very interesting to, to face. But uh, by chance, we, we just had, uh, since the beginning, the situation where we started to work, to, to meet craftsmen. I started, uh, for example, in Valoris with uh, all the ceramists. And uh, we understand very quickly that uh, it's quite a political position too to make that you uh, you continue to work with marvelous craftsmen, you continue to designer like us uh, work with small entity and not just with big uh, famous group, but try to make that uh, a carpenter in uh, in Italy or. Here in the, in the exhibition, there is a lamp which has been done in leather. Uh, 
by someone which is maybe here in the audience, which is a very, very small company in Paris, just uh, sewing perfectly leather. And uh, this, this, this work uh, take hours, take days, take two months. So it has a certain cost. So the only way to to make this piece appear and to the only way to make that these people continue to work. And uh, I think that because of us, a lot of designers now work with him and uh, it restarts a certain, uh, a certain a small company. I think uh, because of this, um, yeah, I, we like to work with craftsmen. We like to to do pieces which are done by million, and I think this uh, it's very interesting to to balance all that, and it's very important. There is another. I speak a lot, but there is another example. We we did a carpet, uh, which is in the exhibition. We have been done uh, in Pakistan, so in a war zone. Uh, we have been fascinated by Kilim since years and years, but. Uh, so we did a project of Kilim, and this has uh, so much success that actually it started to to uh, all the village is, uh, is organized or to, uh, around this idea. So I think it's a it's 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 not a cultural project; it's a real project. We have designed something which is done in a in a village. Uh, this project has a, has success, so it makes that it, it uh, a lot of people the the the, the what you say is, uh, yeah, well, I think you understand what I wanted to say. Well, it's, when I become it, to be serious, I'm, I'm sorry to be boring. And uh, <laughs> Well, it, I mean, it's interesting to hear you mention the, the Killam project with the, this rug that you made in Pakistan and uh, working with the leather craftsmen. Uh, you've also worked with uh, ancient lacquerware techniques in Japan. And even since I've known you, it seems like you, you're slowly kind of expanding your uh your, your opportunities and the, the types of materials and crafts and approaches that, that you work with. Um, and, and even recently we were having a conversation with a gentleman who has a, a fabric company. And I think other designers might go to him, make a drawing of something very graphic, and then just have him print that on a piece of fabric. But you're, when you approach a textile project, you want to understand exactly how that textile is made and woven and how you can bring something new to that. Can you maybe, Erwan, talk a little bit about how you embrace new materials and methods in, in your work and, and over time, you, how you keep expanding that? You ask Erwan because you're singing on so better than me. No. I wanted to give him a little air time. <laughs> <clears throat> well, um, really, really design is something which is highly limited. Uh, in, a, a, um, in an object, when it's more than three material, it's already a lot. Uh, it's already an opera. Uh, objects are highly condensed. And one really issue in design is to, is to be able to define every detail. Uh, a design is not, um, a product design uh, has to be at the end so condensed um, that you have to, to face every small question. And in our case, uh, we've been trying as much as possible to control. And most of the time to control made us actually try to make by yourself things before, to be able to really understand. So for example, many of the uh, so far we've been doing were based on the, the things that we've been trying to stitch in our own studio with a small stitching machine. Uh, there were no kind of previous idea. It was more so far is about, is about textile. Let's stitch textile and we see where we would go. And in a way, we, we are always kind, that's one quality of us is Sometimes we, we kind of self-confident into entering into the process of research. Uh, we think that if we start to stitch, even if we don't stitch properly, uh, even if we doesn't have any shape for a sofa, uh, the sofa will probably emerge naturally from this ongoing process. So actually, yes, now we, we start to, uh, we start to, to, to really try to define some fabric themselves, not not the use of those fabric. And actually, now we've just been buying some some you know the toys for the kids about making weaving fabric, and we start to weave fabric from the early beginning. 
uh, and and sometimes that's our that's our process to we've um, uh, we've we've I think one point is is that me wh when I was a kid I, I was I was fascinated by indie music pop music and actually for me to step on this theater for me today was a little bit despiting because I would have dreamed to, to come with a guitar and to be Lou Reed and something else. <laughs> it's that, that, that was really my dream and actually just under the table there is a small thing that you use to play the guitar, you know, the triangle in plastic. Um, we could have been uh, actually the oasis, you know, with the Gallagher brothers and... Uh, <laughs> And, and, and you see the way my brother is expressing you our are relationship very lucky that, that do we not might end up the, the, like Oasis the, 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 uh, at the end of it. <coughs> uh, but because yes, we had some concerts from the, one the thing, years the ago. Thing, was, the yeah. thing out of, um, out of uh, all those people making music is, uh, for me, the only understanding I had at the time, they were learning to do everything by themselves. Uh, that's been, they're, they're, none of them had been really properly uh, um, learning music, they were, they were, they were making, uh, and through making, they were finding the, the solution, uh, and, and that's a part of our process. We we do a lot. We 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 try to to do by yourself, and most of the time, it has a kind of um, a value for so industrial production or craft production. No, I I think that. Uh yeah, a good designer for me is like a good actor in a certain sense. He's someone which has a very large palette and which is able one day to play for one situation, to understand it perfectly, and, and in another day for another movie to, to play a totally other, other, in another way. A designer has to be a bit like that. A good designer is someone with a lot of empathy, so, which is when you have to meet a craftsman in Japan, you have to, and, and, and to finish, a yeah, designer has to be someone very humble because it's a very generalist discipline. Uh, you work with specialists, uh, marvelous craftsmen, marvelous engineer, marvelous uh, boring engineer sometimes, but uh, anyway, very cultured people and uh, near them we are, we are kids at the end. The question is more uh, to, to, to play with them in a good sense, uh, to, to make that uh, you made your ID appear and for that, you need to understand very quickly what you can do, how to how to deal with these people, how to make that everybody will uh, will participate to to the project. Uh, design is, is a question of design, a question of of collective intelligence. Without uh, a good manufacturer, without a good museum, without a good team to build an exhibition, uh, it will never appear. So it's a question of. Uh, how to organize people, how to, how to explain a project enough to make that everybody want to do the best, want to arrive to a certain quality. And this is a, uh, I think this, uh, so uh, I want to say that uh, he likes this, this, this situation of being, uh, in a certain sense, very uh, naive, and it's true. Uh, after some years, we understand that, uh, and I think our work is more refined now, so. We were super, super naive at the beginning, so I think we did quite interesting thing. But uh, they, they, they are naive in a sense, and I, when I, I see them with a lot of, uh, yeah, I, 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 do, I, I like them, but uh, they are they, they, they were work of uh, 25 uh, and 30 years old uh, designer. I think now we are a bit more refined, and we understand a bit more the, the, the point. So sometimes we are maybe less. Uh, Sensual. I spoke about sensuality before. It's uh, sometimes more serious, and the, the risk is that we become to be uh, too serious. And I, I, I hope that we won't be. But to to understand a bit more about the question is uh, sometimes uh, a, ch a chance. Well, I, th I think we should uh, let everybody get up to see the exhibition. But before but before we do, can you mention or talk about anything that's in the studio right now that you're really excited about that hasn't quite. Uh, Come, come out into the, into public view yet? Really, it's this, uh, starting to weave textile. I, I, I love textile. That's um, I was I was forbade by my mother to touch the stitching machine. Uh, no clue. Maybe because I was a kid, she would have been afraid of uh, uh, I don't know what. 
I and offered to her one when he was 30, a stitching machine, so everybody in the audience was totally so that it was not a good gift for 30 and if years old. He was any, very happy. Said, no. Any textile specialist in the room, please come and speak with me. The only thing is, I'm now I'm looking for um, not, not woven textile, but knitted textile. If, uh, which is less common, actually. But that's, that's, that, it's exciting me. I don't know if it's exciting for the other one, but, um, <laughs> just, uh, I, and still, still before he gets to the microphone, I would just like to, to thank everyone that's been part of this show. Um, and, uh, no way to, to, to mention everything. But, Especially our uh, assistant, but also, Felipe. But also, um, I, I want to thank, so, the museum, I think that uh, it's um, it's not so so common to have um, a product design uh, in in such kind of place. Um, I think I think the applied art uh, uh, history um, and, and practice has. Um, has also quite some indication uh, to give sometimes to to art and vice versa, and uh, and I'm quite uh, happy that uh, that this uh, dialogue take place here. So thank you very much, Michael, and thank you very much, uh, museum and every donors of the museum, of course. Thanks, everyone. But I'm sure he, he wanted to tell something. So <laughs> please, please be seated. <laughs> here, is, here is a grandfather of design talking. So please try, don't throw any potatoes, be, be gentle. I was quite uh, happy that for once you did a good conclusion. So I wanted to stay like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.